All right, so in this example, we have a ball that we're throwing with 20 meters per second at 37 degrees above the horizontal. So let's draw this real quick. Um, throwing it this way, I'm going to call this VA20, and it makes an angle of 37 degrees above the horizontal, above the x-axis like that. And it says, use the conservation of energy to find its maximum height. So let me draw this. Um, it's going to go like this and then hit the ground. I'm going to call this point A, B, and C. And here I want to know the maximum height. So I want to know, want to know what is the height at point B. And it's asking us to do this using conservation of energy. I know information about point B, uh, point A. I want information about point B. So I'm going to write the energy equation from A to B, since A is my known and B is my target. So here's the energy equation. Oops. So there is kinetic energy at point A because you tossed it. It has a speed at that point. There's no potential at point A um, because we're assuming that you're throwing it from the ground or close enough to the ground. There's no information about height, so we can assume that this is zero. The work done by non-conservative forces is zero because, again, you throw with 20. It starts with 20, and then from the instant it leaves your hand with 20 and throughout the entire um, path on the air, you're not doing anything. There's no friction. Um, there is a kinetic energy at point B. Even though at point B is the highest point, it still has a velocity. It has a velocity at point B is the same as Vx. Remember, Vx is whatever initial velocity you had here. Vx is your Vax. And this velocity in the x-axis is the same everywhere. Vax is the same as um, is Vx throughout. And in this case, there is no Vy here, right? So I can write that Vby is zero therefore the entire um, all of the speed or velocity at point B comes from its X component there's no Y component okay so there's definitely energy here and there is energy here because there's a height so let's expand this half MV a squared equals half MVB squared plus MGHB the mass is cancelled and I'm looking for HB Let's try to plug in some numbers, and you're going to notice that we're going to get stuck. So half the speed here is 20. Half. And now, realize that I don't have VB. At least it wasn't given to me. We can calculate VB, but we don't have it right away. Okay, VB squared, we don't have it, plus GHB. So you got stuck not having a number, and this is just a basic physics hustle question, that I, as I like to call it, because you're going to get stuck, need a number, and you have to go try to find it. Okay, and this is where you have to realize and remember a little bit of projectile motion. Realize that the velocity at point B, because there's no VBY, is made up entirely of its X component. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. So since VBY equals zero, then VB is made up entirely of VBX. Okay, that's the first point. Two, since the acceleration on the X axis is zero, and it always is zero, right? Unless you have um, air resistance, which most of the time doesn't show up. Then I can say that VBX is the same as VAX because it never changes. In fact, it doesn't change. So I like to think of it as not VAX, VBX, VCX, but just VX to make the point, to reinforce the point that VX is always the same. So if I want to find VB, I just have to find VBX. And if I want to find VBX, I just have to find VAX. And we can do that. VAX is VA cosine of theta. X goes with cosine as long as the angle is against the horizontal, which it is. Okay? And we can plug this in. This is 20 cosine of 37. And 20 cosine of 37 is going to be 16 meters per second. Cool? So 16 is a number that goes right here. Now let's continue this over here. Um, this is going to be 400, 200. Um, this is 256 divided by 2. This is going to be 128 plus 10HB. If I move this over here, I'm going to get a 72 equals 10HB. So HB equals 7.2 meters okay 
that's it for this one. Um, again, energy equation got a little weird because we didn't have one of the pieces of information. And sometimes you're going to get these questions with projectile motion where you're going to have almost everything, but then you're going to have to decompose an angle to figure something out. And the, the key thing here to remember was the fact that your VB um, at the highest point will always just be your VX, and you can get VX from VA. So it says here, uh, one last point, not really related to this question, but just to these types of problems, that problems that require time, notice that neither, uh, neither one of these problems that we've solved require time, uh, but problems that require time to be solved cannot be solved with the energy equation. And that's because the energy equation has no time. It has no reference to time. There's no T variable anywhere. And instead, we're going to have to use motion equations. Okay? We're not really going to run into these here because this is from a previous chapter, right? And the whole idea of this portion is that you can do some of these questions using energy, but not all of them. Um, some of the other questions that you won't be able to do using energy will have time, and in that case, you have to use motion equations instead. Whenever you're at being asked for time, use motion equations. Otherwise, you might be able to use the energy equation. That's it. Let me know if you guys have any questions.